You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. Bon Sweet Cost. Itchy Bon. Itchy Bon Sweet Cost. There we go, Curtis. Blew the budget on that new intro theme. What do you reckon? Tell Owen we don't need a new theme. Right? <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do that until I did it. <laughs> uh, you were just saying, like, we should just roll with it and see what happens. Yeah. And then we did. Yeah. And it was fucking brilliant. Thank you so much. We were, like, trying to figure out how to press record and shit. We're like, we've had a month off. We don't even know how to fucking do this. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> We excel with minimal preparation. We'll just figure it out. Literally press play and just immediately fuck it off. All right. So anyway, that's fun. <laughs> Welcome to, I guess, zero hour of the Itchy Barn Sweetcast. That's the rebrand. We, we're going to stick with it. We couldn't think of anything else and we kind of like it and it's fun. It's a, yeah. it, it makes me laugh. It makes us laugh and it makes us both laugh and it's made other people that we tell laugh. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, if you don't like it, um Fuck off, it's not your show. change it again in two years anyway. Yeah, exactly. We'll easily be peer pressured into changing it in minutes. But, hey, unless they change the Japanese language, I guess, where Ichiban no longer means one and it becomes something terrible, we're we're just going to roll with that. And I think it's not so. So, yeah, here we are. We are going to... With the change to Ichiban Sweetcast, as you can tell, we're very organised. But that's okay. We're we're gonna roll it out. I've got literally mere days. Hang on, how many got says fuck. Okay. Five days till I'm on vacation. So I uh, can't imagine we'll get heaps done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna record now, we're gonna talk about some shit that happened. Uh we're gonna vamp for a bit and then like there'll be more of a more official looking better uh revamp as we go. But yeah, so this is episode zero is what we're gonna call this until we have our shit together. How's that sound? I, I think what we need to do is just say, like, you're getting your show. Yeah. You know, you're getting your show. It doesn't matter what it's called. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You, you want to talk to you want to talk to Rafe. You want to talk to Curtis. You want to talk to the International Wrestling Grand Prix. Your good friend Curtis Spears, your bad friend Rafe Houston. That's the boys no longer from the shorts. The, yeah. the, the sweet boy. The boys from the sweet shop. Yeah, they, <laughs> there, <it is. laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's it. That's who, yeah. that's who you get. You still get the same dickheads that you've you've gotten for ages, and we are excited to talk New Japan. It's been welcome to the sweet spot, baby. Let's talk some New Japan. Exactly, and you can know that hey, we're still here. We've quit about a hundred times, I reckon, since uh, <laughs> since we back. Yeah, but we never <laughs> really meant it. No, no, Re- not really. No, we didn't. We just had to you a know, little find bit. our land, but not a, really a little bit. But we've got some plans, and we're both feeling excited. So I think I think that's really fun. So as we transition into ISC, it's pretty cool to have like a what do you call that? An acronym, an abbreviation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we want to try and make more more frequent and easily digestible content, yeah? There's quite a few of our friends that do really long-form stuff in the space, and we, we will still do that occasionally, but we want to try and, knowing who we are as people and, like, what our schedules are, we want to try and record both pertinent stuff and evergreen content and then just kind of get it out more frequently. That is, That's our goal, right? And we want to get you, like, bite-sized chunks. Yeah. We know that, like... You, you can sit down and listen to a two-hour podcast, uh, you know, Super J-Cast. We, you can sit down and listen to a four-hour or eight-hour podcast, call it We Work <laughs> Stiff. But, you know, what, maybe maybe you're just running down to the shop. You want to get a sandwich and you want to get back to work 
hey, there's a there's a 35 minute fucking uh, Ichiban sweet cast. Yeah, exactly. You want some you sweet news in your sweet ears. So that's it. And so that is what we're going to do. So today's topic, and we will take topics from uh, the listeners as well. If you you're like, oh, I'd love to hear the fucking sweet boys talk about blah. I don't know. Fucking yep. Will Ospreay's Masawa gear for 30 minutes. Like, dial them up. For that. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Give Curtis a reason. Like, and so, so that's the vibe. So, but today we really just want to talk about the main event of New Beginning in Osaka because it really was something amazing. Dog Pound Cage Match um, was an absolute spectacle. And I know about you, Curtis, but as somebody who regularly covers interviews, watches, some pretty crazy shit in wrestling. This was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It, like, felt very dangerous, especially by the end. Um, and the great thing about it that not a lot of other stuff has is it, it felt like the the end of a blood feud. You know, it really felt like it. People always talk about back in the day, you know, the huge, um, you know, blood feuds that they're – that have, you know, with Dusty and all that and Flair and then had to get into the cage and then they're bleeding everywhere and fans are trying to shoot people and it's all crazy. It felt like that, right? Like it felt really, really intense. How, how did you feel about watching it? Because you, you didn't get to watch so it live, right? You had you had to watch I it didn't, live. I yeah. didn't get to watch it live. I was working the night before, so I I went home and went straight to bed because I wasn't going <laughs> to. I wasn't going to make it till, you know, one in the afternoon when it was on, especially yeah. with a 64 minute match, mm -hmm. but uh, which 64 minutes. Hey, now I let's go. It. I loved it. Oh man. That was great. It and didn't you know me, like I'm it like, I have no time, but I was like, when I was watching it, I was like, this could keep going forever. I absolutely loved it. And a, and a 30 minute ZSJ versus Danielson fucking match right before that. Absolutely. Holy cow. Which was Holy crazy. Cow. The whole show show was a lot of fun. Oh. Hold up. But, I almost said the whole show was a lot of fun. I forgot the tag titles. But uh, uh, that was a fucking nightmare. But that's not what we're talking about. We're staying on topic. The same as we will do another episode about ZSJ. So right now we're just going to focus on the right. dog pound cage. Man. We need to keep so ourselves the, to that or we'll just go rambling. <laughs> It'll <laughs> eight hours. <laughs> we're going to have to find a space to cut here eventually. Yeah. Uh, so No, I, I didn't get to watch it live. I uh, I ended up turning it on and like opened fucking Twitter like a dumbass, and of course I see I see in the ring uh, I see the United Empire and I was like fuck did they really have Will go out on top? Oh really? So you got the wrong end. I had no stick. idea. Amazing. I had no idea because you would have just seen the post match thing where they're cheering and it's like streamers and stuff like that. I love that yeah. for you. Did in that photo could you see that the ring had been destroyed? Yes, that, uh, just a little bit because, like, I saw that the the the, mats the ring was front. You could you could expose the uh, the wood, but I didn't know that it had been actually like wrestled Fucked. on after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I didn't know anything about it. I just thought that I was like, well, how are how's the United Empire going to win? At the very end, there's all five of the war dogs ready to go. They're all lining up, and there's Will by himself. And I was like, motherfucker. Tony Khan politicked it, so he's going to take out all five of the oh, – no, it's over. <laughs> I okay. actually love so, that because you – at that point, you were worked into a shoot thinking that, like, Will wins, right? So you're like, oh, my God, this motherfucker's about to just fucking absolutely bury the entire faction on his own. <laughs> Dude, I was ready to get so angry. Yeah, I was ready to yeah, get sure. so fucking angry. Sure. And, I, you know, I wasn't going to – I wasn't going to blame Will. Yeah. I was going to blame Tony Khan. Yeah, because, yeah. Fucking, Actually, you know, you know, I was going to save this till after we talk about the match, but I want to I want to mention it real quick. Is that like I really do wish that wrestlers contract status and things weren't as public as they are, and I mean the internet is what it is, but I really do think and it's something that we commented on back when it first happened. I don't think the wrestlers need to announce that in the ring. And what I mean by that is for those of us who want to stay in the dark about that or people who are just watching, you know, with kayfabe in advance, this match 
would have held even more weight. I know they want to go, oh, it's Will Ospreay's last match and shit like that. But imagine how much gravitas that has when he just never fucking comes back. You know what I mean? Like the match happens, the War Dogs end him, they have a big thing, thank you, blah, 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 and then he just never wrestles in New Japan again and all the fans are like, what the fuck happened to him? And they're like, the War Dogs killed him. Yeah, the War Dogs actually ended him. They, they um, ended his career in New Japan. He had to leave. They should have loser leaves town, and he just never is in New Japan again. Like, that would to me would be amazing, you know? Like, it, obviously, guys like us, Mark, whatever, would, n- would know that he's got a contract somewhere and, and he's not coming back. But in storyline, the War Dogs triumphed and the leader of the United Empire is gone. And then the gravitas for that is then like, who's left in the United Empire? How do we fight back about these guys and stuff like that? Our dude's gone. He had to go get a job elsewhere because his contract here was fucking torn up because they beat him up. You know what I mean? It puts it on their shoulders, not like, we'll got the bag. Like, I'm trying to think, like, is it worth it to, to – the, the counterbalance to that is, of course, the money mm-hmm. and wanting to, you know, book Will Ospreay's last match. And, um, you know, I mean, they've got AEW television on on New Japan World, right? So, like, you've already seen Will Ospreay show up on AEW and literally sign his contract in the middle of an AEW ring. I did a rant about it because I yeah. fucking hated that. Yeah, sure. So, like, you'd have to have multiple companies in line together. You would have to have AEW not hyping up Will Ospreay, which is something that they – do not want to do. They want to hype up Will Ospreay. Mm. You'd have to have uh, New Japan not hyping up his last match, which is something that they want to do. They want to sell those extra tickets for for people that want to go see. And like Osaka was a huge a huge uh, draw for them. Yeah, that match was a big big draw. Yeah. So yeah, I know yeah, I, I know like, it is. But you know, there, there's also another argument to that where it's the ongoing effects, right? So it's like yes, all of those things in the short term, right? But in the long term, investing in wrestling and in the the companies and stuff, I better go see this fucking loser leaves town match because fucking maybe he's never going to be there again because that has happened before. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like Jay White just last year. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then it's like, okay, so we didn't know the thing and he just fucking left. Now that's a thing. And it's like, and on AEW side, yes, you know, it's cool to announce that fucking Will is signing with him. Look how fucking good we are. But imagine this. Imagine in the time when Will's not there, just investing in the fucking talent that you've already got to sell tickets. And then, think. and then down the road, when Will suddenly pops up, huge pop, big deal, didn't expect he was coming. This is huge news. Instead of like just trotting him out on a pay-per-view and being like, by the way, he's going to come in fucking six months. Like what's what's more impactful and what's more newsworthy? So I, I think that it's sort of diminishing returns in a sense, you know, like if you keep doing that stuff, it's always like grabbing at like the lowest hanging fruit to constantly keep stuff going. But if you invest in your talent and stretch things out and invest in the booking, then the overall quality and anticipation and ramifications of things would mean more, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a fucking promoter, but that's just my thought. You know what I mean? You can condition your fan base to like shit happens, you know? There probably is someone there saying that. There is probably someone in the room who's like, we don't have to announce this ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But you're a company that has to worry about like quarterly, uh, you know, quarterly sales and stuff like that. So there's probably... A, a person with a bigger, you know, a bigger tie sitting yes. in a bigger chair who's yeah. saying, no, 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 you sell those tickets right now. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And, absolutely. And, and, and that's gotta, what you've got to find the company business. who's willing to play the long game. And New Japan does play the long game. Mm. But when it comes to seeing someone out the door, are they really going to worry that much about, you know, I oh, fuck them? Yeah. Why are we playing a long game with him? Exactly. I, I don't know. Keep AEW happy, keep the money rolling in, stream the shit, whatever. You know what I mean? But that that's just business. You know what I mean? Like we can all yeah. sort of wish for the good old days when, you know, the kayfabe was real and you promote all that stuff over long term. But 
the internet exists now. Like that's just not going to happen, you know. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's not. It's not 1986. Yeah. And I'm not saying this. I think this would ever happen. I just wanted to sort of take a minute to sort of wistfully think about what could be and what those emotions would be like if that was the case. You know what I mean? So, but I, I think with this match, maybe we just sort of start from the start a little bit, you know, and and break it down because I feel like what was really cool about it. And why an hour makes sense is every single wrestler like had their moment. You know what I mean? Everybody got to throw their fucking ideas in the pot and they're like, let's do all of these ideas but make it all co- cohesive and then make the story make sense by the end, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously it starts out with Finlay and Will are the first two entrants. Also, I love that it wasn't just like everybody right from the beginning. I like the sort of war games. War games. Multiple. Yep. It gives everybody a bit of time to shine and also it's not just like a clusterfuck right from the start. But obviously we everybody's been talking about it, but it was a really cool moment where Will's like, give me 10 minutes, you know, before they come. And he's like, I'll give you five, which was the – five minutes at Wrestle Kingdom that John Moxley and Will Ospreay had a truce to beat up Finlay before they go. And it, and it's so funny that like when you when you kind of break down Finlay's actions and everything that's happened to him and shit like that, he hasn't – everything he says is heelish, but all his actions aren't, you know. I think that's, that's really interesting because like, you know, the – Guys get ganging up on somebody to beat them up, you know what I mean? Like they did have like the little little war dog running in that match, but it's almost like they were coming in to help their dude because he'd been ganged up on since right at the start. Like, like if you just shift the lens a little bit, he's almost the hero, right? Because he's defending New Japan. But because he's wearing That's a Bullet Club want. logo, he's the bad yeah. guy. Yeah. That's what you always want. You always want the bad guy uh to be the hero of his own movie. Yeah, he's right? Magneto, you right? Want- yeah. Yeah, he's Magneto. He's he's a Killmonger in Black Panther, right? Like, it, you're like this guy would be the hero if something went wrong. If yeah. if there was just if if the butterfly flapped its wings, you know, the wrong way, mm-hmm. this guy would be the hero of the movie. Mm-hmm. And um, people love that. People love that shit. Yeah, I fucking love it. I do. The 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 way I'm feeling right now with the like protect Rev Pro, fucking let's go New Japan, like all that sort of shit. Like, rah, rah. it's it's working. It's working on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's cool because he's able to take that good thing that he's doing and find a way to rub it into everybody's face. It's like when uh, Okan saved that little girl and he got the the plaque from the police. Like the city, like you're take, a hero. <laughs> yeah. And he was taking it around to show like, it, putting it in people's face and being like, you have to fucking shake my hand because I'm a fucking hero. Yeah. You know, like so you find funny. a way to make that just a little bit healy. And it's like I what you did that. was amazing. You literally saved a girl from a predator, but instead you then have to show everybody how heroic you are and people fucking hate it. Yeah, literally <laughs> the best. Um, oh, so good. We uh, actually we'll get to Okan when we we get to him because I do have some talking points re- regarding him as well, um, but but yeah so the, they start off and and really great great exchange like uh, I love the two of them together. Um, after that you get Driller coming out fucking looking like that was Rambo the best dude with his bandolier of fucking forks exactly I and i want to point, point God, out I did you that. notice that every war dog introduced like a new weapon right like that like yep. he comes out with the fort like each of the war dogs introduces kind of more violence as they come and then each united empire guy come kind of comes out to save his friends you know, so so yeah, Driller comes out fucking armed to the gills with forks and and begins the double dragging turtle. Callum Newman. Oh, that's right, as a distraction. See that, and that was smart too because it was a way they're like they know Will looks at Callum Newman like a little brother. How can we put him off his game when we come out? And not just double team him. They they bring out his friend and they fucking distract him and they handcuff him to a thing and then. Pr- proceed to like beat the living fuck out of Will. And then it's like, I, I literally said to my wife, I'm like, I fucking hope Hanare's next. Like if all the boys were in the back and you were choosing it on the fly, who's going in to back him up? You're like, you send in Hanare next. Like, mm-hmm. and, and immediately he fucking comes out and do this man 
fucking worked in this match. Like, oh god, through injury and shit. Like, what a legendary fucking performance for him. Hey, like, just Dude, the thing about Anari is like, people already love him. You know, mm-hmm. he's been building and building and building, and when he finally wins a title, he will win a title this year, a hundred percent. Whether it's the never, whether he's the person to dethrone Finley for that international title, uh, you know, the strong open weight title or so, or whatever, whatever he wins, fans are going to go shit house. Yeah, yeah, because it's finally time, and he'll it's he'll finally he'll have like earned it. And it was stressful too because there was no replays and stuff, and commentary are just talking about like, oh fuck, he's he's injuries with the doctors, he's not coming back. They were like, he's officially out of this match is what they were saying at one point. And I was fucking stressed out about it. And I don't know whether that was a work or I don't think it was. I think that's what they actually thought was happening. I think they thought he was really injured. But when he comes back and he just staggers in and his fucking head is wrapped to fuck and he's like woozy on his feet and he just attacks, you're like, yo, let's fucking go. We're like, this yep. monster shouldn't even fucking be here today. <laughs> he was an absolute weapon, eh? He's like, doctor, he's like, I know I'm bleeding. I need you to put a fucking pampers around my head, wrap a nappy around me, whatever you got to do. Yeah. Soak that shit up because I got someone to fucking slap. Yeah, he's like, and keep he, the, the brain in the head because I'm fucking going back in and you're not stopping staple me. Staple it in if you need to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can imagine the poor like Japanese doctor being like, uh, maybe no more wrestling. And he's like, I'm fucking going, so do what you want because... Yeah. yeah, he's like either fucking uh, wrap it up or don't. Yeah, I got shit to do because I'm going absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, fucking some monstrous moves by him. It and reminded th- me so much of like in in uh, professional hockey, ice hockey. Mm. You'll see people literally like take a slap shot to the face, four teeth fall out, and like they're back and they've just got like a plexiglass bubble on their helmet and they're back for the next period. Yeah, you know, you'll see you'll see a, a dude, uh, you know break his nose mm-hmm. and then they stuff cotton in it yeah and they don't miss a shit wrap his fucking you face know? and just <laughs> just oh man well i mean Such for them tough, as well tough. for the that's fighting spirit there's there's like when you say fighting spirit from now on that's like he's got that spirit. oh dude that's tokan absolutely you know, that's, that's the fucking fighting yeah spirit. and then at the end right so they abs they fucking get him out of there the second the match finishes right like he's gone he doesn't get to be a part of like the end thing, like Hanaris just missing in action, right? Um, all the young boys get him out of there. But I love that at the when they're doing the press conference at the end, Will's talking and then he just goes, holy fuck, and in comes Hanare on fucking all fours just crawling into the thing and all he says to Will is he's like, I'm sorry, brother. Like he's like, I'm sorry. And Will's like, it's okay, man. Like it's okay, like. And it's as a brother and as somebody who looks as Will, as somebody who gave him an opportunity and gave him a huge break, he's like, in kayfabe, I let him down. We didn't win. I I got beaten. You know what I mean? Like he just wanted to fight for his friend. And I thought that was a great fucking character beat for him. You know what I mean? Them hugging there and him just being like, I had no more to give. And he's like, of course you didn't, you know? Well, there's there, that's the thing is like you can only fight so hard when you're fighting an army. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like the war dogs, like they they have that militaristic theme going, but like they are an army. Mm-hmm. You know, like they 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 would s- focus down one person each time. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like they would they would pick the who's the biggest dog in the fight right now. Okay, Hanare just came in. He's fresh. Let's fucking gang up on him really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's down. Hey, Will's back up. We'll we will descend upon him like a pack of dogs. Yeah, yeah. And it was so fucking cool. Yeah. It was just it was like those guys in the United Empire, like Maloney, when he joined the Bullet Club, he was like, United Empire soft. Those guys don't have it. You yeah. know, like these are these my dogs for real. Yeah. yeah. And um so seeing seeing them continue to prove their fighting spirit was really cool. So mm-hmm. uh I dug that. Uh who came out who came out after uh, Hanari was Gabe, right? No, Gabe was last. Oh, Gabe um, was last. Yeah, you're right. He was the last. So it was war dog. It was um, was it? It was the cocaine cowboy. 
It was. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, right? Was it him or was it? Yeah, no, nah, it wasn't it was an Android, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was Connors. Connors was actually just one note on Driller. How fucking crazy when the entire fucking ring is all fucked up and Driller's out of sight and they're going for that pin and he breaks it up with a Driller killer onto three guys with Will Os- Osprey. <laughs> like, he just comes off from off camera fucking onto the pack and you're like, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, dude. Like I, I was jumping up and down like at the end of that fucking match because I, I didn't, I didn't know where the finish was coming, yeah. but I kept expecting that the you under, expecting uh, United, United, United Empire, Empire to come back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! So every time, every time the United Empire was like pinning somebody, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> You're like, "This is it," but here it, it is. It this was is not. It. But yeah, no, absolute weapon. Um, yeah, Connors was so good in this man. Um. Some of the fucking spears and shit, like he was doing through tables and out of the like he just went so hard, it was unbelievable. Like eh? Connors is so underrated. Yeah, man. Like we talk, we, you know, he gets mentioned. Oh, he's he's one of the one of the war dogs and blah blah blah. Like he's the person that probably has. Like I, I don't know, man. Him and him and Maloney both have like huge personalities but like he's kind of getting pushed to the back a little bit like him and Coglin both which is unfortunate because they, it's because the probably, british guys are like so loud you know what i mean so and, and, big, and they're, they're so big and they're so tough. physically big and personality big and stuff it's hard to stand out but he's um he's a fucking real one hey like he's dude he's so good yeah. he's so crisp and so good in the ring yeah and like I, I, I really do love Clark Connors, and I really hope that uh, like, I don't know the the rumors about the War Dogs and shit like that. Man, I hope fucking Connors is there. I hope Connors stays for a long time. I hope Coglin stays for a long time. Mm. You know, like I hope Gabe stays for a long time. These guys are all amazing, and yeah. I want them so badly in my New Japan Pro Wrestling. Open the fucking checkbook, yo. <laughs> Open the checkbook. Open the yen it. is down. Blah blah blah. Open the fucking checkbook. Yeah. That's it. You don't have to pay Okada anymore. You got the cash. Let's go. Let's sort it out. You don't have to pay Okada or Will anymore. Fucking. Well, the yeah, cash. there you go. And I know you save that budget for them. Um, the fucking the spot where he gets hung was crazy. Yeah, him going through through tables out the thing. He was just absolutely brutal. Eh? Um, after him, who was there? I fuck. I didn't write down this order. I'm just remembering from scratch. I mean, we can just keep going through members. It doesn't really matter about the order. Um, and then I think was, yeah, actually it probably would have been TJP next. Um, and so, yeah, I guess the big story beat from TJP in this is the disappearing for a bit and then coming back as the Aswang. How did you feel about, uh, about the appearance of the Aswang in this match? I didn't care for it. Um, cause it, well, Maybe it's on me because I thought the Oswong was like TJP's great Muda. Mm-hmm. Like when he takes another, when he takes something to the next level, there's the Oswong, yeah. right? Uh-huh. And um, then when he leaves halfway through the match and he comes back and he's the Oswong, it read kind of WWE to me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fucking silly. And then I thought about it and I was like, I'm currently wearing a Jushin Thunder Liger shirt. What the fuck am I talking about? Like, I was like, no, this it's, this isn't his great Muda. This is this is Kishin Liger. Yeah. This is something that he has to do when um, when he wants to take it up a notch, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, the the beast comes out, but I think the thing that ruined it for me is earlier in the match you could see TJP's red contact lenses. Oh, could you? I, I, like, I didn't even notice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so you, like, you oh, sort okay. of read it was going to be there. Oh, and I mean, you would have also seen that. You know how you said you had that spoiler on social media? Did you see him there in the photo? Uh, I wasn't really looking at it because I closed the photo. Fo- I closed the. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, it. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing we didn't mention as well is Clark Connors with the tax. At the oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> on on the back and then on the front as well, like absolute yeah. menace. Was it was a uh, June Kasai was like, "Welcome to the life," and fucking uh, Clark Connors was like, "Thanks, I'm never coming back to this again." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I fucking hate it. <laughs> it absolutely fucking sucked. Um, I will say about TJP, at least they're they're experimenting with him and they're figuring it out. You know what I mean? I do like the. The Oswan yeah, thing, I, I, I think they'll get better. You know what I mean? I'm not really super fucking hyped for him 
joining the heavyweight division and all that kind of stuff. Like I don't – and I don't know. They've been playing around with the idea of him saying he should be the leader and stuff like that. I have no time for that. I don't, I, no. Not, I'm not interested in no, that thank at you. all. No, nah, but – um, but hey, they're going to experiment with stuff, so we'll have a look. He's a he's a really talented wrestler, so we just have to see where he's it goes. He's a very talented wrestler. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's a very talented wrestler, but I, I he's not the right person to lead. No. Uh, and I think you know, we were talking about uh, Great Ocon. We'll talk about more about him, but he, you know, said specifically, the United Empire doesn't need a leader. Yeah. United Empire can be a autonomous unit yeah. where each one of us can support each other and things like that. And he, that's what it was supposed to be at first. Yeah. Um, but when you've got a Will Ospreay, when you've got the best wrestler in the world, yeah, he kind of tends to get more absolutely more traction. Absolutely. I, I do think that's a mistake by Okan. He should be he should be stepping into the front of foremost. There's always going to be a set yes. pace. You know what I mean? Like it's not gonna that's beta energy, Okan. Come on, man. Okay, so uh, <laughs> after fucking after fucking TJP, that's when we see Android come out, fucking or the Dead Eye Dreadnought carrying one thousand chairs. <laughs> that oh my god, he was, he was a the menace big strong boy. in when this the, match. When the teacher like, says, fucking, "Someone help me with these chairs," and he goes, "I'll take them all." He was um he did a lot of really brutal fucking physical stuff in this match. At one point, at the end, when the fucking the ring was apart. He was sort of walking and his leg went through the ring and I was so stressed out. I was like, oh, this is the last thing we need is him just blowing out a knee in the middle of the fucking ring. That was uh, the whole time I'm sitting there watching it. And I'm just like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to see someone's leg get broken right now. I don't want to see that. It was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. It was scary. Really stressful. Um, And him like just fucking take it on two guys at once, just taking a thousand fucking, you know, kendo stick shots. Like Oh, the Bull Nakano moment where he was just like, come and get it. Yeah. And like just they just toweled him off with those fucking with those fucking kendo yeah. sticks. He was, and he just looked like a fucking like a boss. Just yeah. Like, God damn, that was cool. And uh there was actually a cool part as well where he ends up handcuffing an R8 of the cage and he's just like sit the fuck down <laughs> like he's just like fucking stop you're handcuffed here now but it, it almost felt like probably, he, probably he, like real life fucking good. he's like actually you're going to get very injured please just stay here <laughs> like, yeah. yeah you need to have a timeout. yeah absolutely then comes Cobb um, obviously powerhouse Cobb how are you feeling about Cobb in the United Empire at the moment I'm not I don't know feels I've, like he's kind of Feels like he's kind of drifting. It it does it does feel like he's drifting. I also fucking hate that he has this connection to Riddle and they're like fucking experimenting with sort of him maybe being United Empire because I just don't need it and I'm blaming Cobb for it. So I guess he's catching some of that heat from me. Um, I think he was good at this. I mean, Cobb is always good. You know what I mean? But yeah. I would like to, I don't know, I'd just like to feel energy like he's a new Japan guy again. But, yeah, it, I don't know. It feels a, a little bit weird for me. I, I don't know. I feel like he might be on his way out the door. Mm. Like it feels like Cobb's he's there catching a paycheck at the moment. You know, yeah, yeah. he's kind of, like I said, he's just drifting. Yeah. He's he's there's nothing really going on for him. And that's, that fucking sucks because man, like you said, he's awesome. He's so much fun to watch, mm. but like, I guess when we think about, who who from this match has has had their final match in New Japan? Yes, Will Osprey has had their final match in New, his not, final match in New Japan. Has anyone else? And I'm I'm wondering if maybe that might have been Jeff Cobb's. Well, not his final match, but maybe he's got one foot out the door right now. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. There's just a vibe there, and it might be yeah other stuff, but I don't know. Uh, he was still good in the match, though, and I think he could still be like a really valuable member of United Empire. I think they really need to find him, though. Remember when he, like, was a bit more Healy Jeff Cobb for a minute, coming out with, like, the wet hair, a bit more focused, Tim and O'Card were doing the tag stuff and him seemed a bit more dangerous? Like, that's the kind of... him versus Shingo for the never? Yeah, yeah that was great. Yeah, too. like, I, that's kind of what I want to see from my Jeff Cobb. I want to see him as big and angry and intimidating. But I think because he has such a great personality... He sort of like leans into like I'm a fun dude, like kawaii sort of vibe, and it's like it sort of takes away from his intimidation a little bit, maybe for me. 
Yeah, and like you look at him, dude's dude's a refrigerator with a head. Like nothing should take away from his intimidation. Yeah, that should be an extra layer on top of it. Like mm -hmm. he can turn it on and turn it off. Sure, you know, like he can be like, I'm the intimidating guy, but I'm actually having here to have fun. Hey, yeah. hey, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just seemed like I I don't have a problem with what he does when he does act silly and stuff like that when they're having fun. Mm -hmm. I do have a problem with the fact that he doesn't seem to care. Mm. Yeah, like. That's fair. That's it. Just fair. seems like he's 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 not giving a hundred and ten. Yeah, yeah. In this match, yeah. And it's and you you put that up against Will Osprey, who's never given less than a hundred and ten percent in a match. Yeah. And you know you put that up against uh, these other guys who are giving the match of their fucking lives yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, yeah, I mean the fact was, that I can't kind of sad, tell you what he did in this match really. Like I I can't even really think of any super sick moments for him like i'm we're sitting here just listing off highlights from the war dog guys you know what i mean and i'm like i know jeff cobb came saying, they, in. they were given the fucking match of their lives yeah yeah you know? absolutely um and speaking of then comes in gabe kid as like the last war dog now this guy fucking hell man like <laughs> it was like borderline reckless or maybe actually over the borderline I mean, into reckless actually or, reckless yeah actually reckless spinning that fucking ladder throwing chairs fucking carrying on like he he's just something else is Gabe kid eh? dude Gabe is on another fucking planet right now yeah like he's just an actual like mutant yeah. like the dude is like he came back and joined the war dogs mm -hmm. and like hit uh, hit the fucking gas. Yeah. He has never he has not taken his foot off of it since he got there. Cool. Have, did, have you ever been on Gabe Kidd's uh Twitter? Like, uh, you, like looked at not recently, but yeah, I have. Uh -huh. Feel feel free to go on there sometime and just look at his likes. <laughs> what like things he it's likes? Things that he likes. Yeah. Okay. When you go to his profile, it'll say like media, likes, that sort of thing. Yeah. What is Dude's it? Dude's on another he's on another fucking planet. It's hilarious. What kind of shit? Anyway, is it? it's it's all just big booty bitches. <laughs> they, there's nothing about nothing about anything wrestling. It's just it's just ass, 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 ass. <laughs> Good on him. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh he's fuck. he's killing it. That's but, so um, funny. Oh no, he he is injured though. Did you know that he got yeah, injured? Yeah, I did, I did hear that he was hurt, which um yeah, yeah which is a which shame. I will not be seeing him and Shingo tomorrow. Yeah, that is a shame. That is a shame because I know <sighs> that was like a big one for why you were going uh, yeah. to that particular event. Yeah. But you know, you don't want the dude to hurt himself further. So no, yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely. Um, um the is, other oh, do oh, you yeah. want to hit that rumor real fast? Uh, I don't know what rumor you're talking about, but before so, before you do, let me just quickly say yeah. great Gabe Kid moment in this is when Will is left alone with him. You know, he's cradling Akira and we'll touch on Akira in a bit, but like he's cradling Akira and he, he fucking pushes him out of the ring and he's surrounded by the war dogs and Gabe Kid's like, You're fucked. He's like, You're absolutely fucked. <laughs> like, just that character out of him is just always so good. He's so vicious. Dude, yeah, he he doesn't know how to turn it off. Yeah, like he's got he's got it dialed in now, and he is fucking bullseyes every goddamn time. And I think it's so funny because people are looking at Gabe Kid and they're saying like, "We want Gabe Kid. We want Gabe Kid for leader. We want Gabe Kid for leader." At some point, they're going to let that simmer. They're going to put that in that pot and just let it simmer, 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 simmer till it's the right time. And then, boom, mm -hmm. something's going to happen with Gabe Kid and people are going to go fucking shit. House. Yeah, it's did you, so good. Did you notice the moment when the war dogs leave? Uh, they get up to the stage, you know, they're all celebrating, they're fucking about, everybody goes. The last two on the stage are Driller and Kid. And they like put their heads together, like we just fucking did this shit. And fucking Driller slaps Gabe on the face, and then Gabe goes and like he follows him out. It's like I wonder if there's something in those two being the last two there. You know what I mean? Whether like the British guys are like, yeah, we're fucking doing this now, but we've got our own agenda. You know what I mean? It definitely could be, or it could be that you know they're the two that are sticking around after this match. You know, yeah. there's 
uh, I keep bringing up the contracts for, and we just talked about how we don't want to talk about the contract yeah, stuff, yeah. Uh-huh. but the contracts for Coglin and um, uh, Connors are both currently up. Oh, really? Know? And yeah, I mean, like they're they're both kind of working on handshakes, from what I understand. So, like, yeah, yeah we can see if um, see if maybe they're the they're the two war dogs for now you know yeah okay oh well we'll see how we go it would be a real shame if those guys went what's this uh rumor that you were threatening to tell me before we started recording oh it's just a silly one i have uh i was have a idea that possibly uh orange cassidy is showing up at rev pro tomorrow oh really I wanted to i wanted to put that into the ether because um yeah rev pro put out a tweet that was uh, here, I'll read it to you. Uh-huh. See if you read what I read into it. Okay. There was chaos at the end of last week's show in Southampton, and there will be chaos tomorrow live at the Crystal Palace National Sports Center. And then it says, um, six-man scramble match, Richard Holiday, Shaw Samuel, Spike Trevay, Flash Morgan Webster, Cameron Kai versus question marks. We're going to fill the question marks with an open invite to an in- any international wrestler. Mm-hmm. So chaos international wrestler and who's in town today at the fulham fc football game yeah it's orange Cassidy. orange cassidy mm. yeah so yeah. i'm putting that into the air i think it'd be fun to see orange cassidy yeah that would be fun for you and i mean does he have a history with ref Pro? no no not as far as i know mm. exactly he does still sort of read like an indie guy though you know what I mean? As as big as he is in like AEW and stuff, his like indie roots were so strong that like you could definitely see him doing something like that. Yeah, like he's constantly showing up at indies all over uh, yeah, yeah. in America, and and he's in town, and they're doing a big show. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Um, while I was, you know, uh, we were chatting about this, I was flicking through the pictures to see. Uh, on the results page to see if it reminded me of anything. And it flicked to that picture of Hanare climbing the cage after his head injury and doing that huge leg drop through the tables. And I was like, fuck it. I was like, what are you doing, you mad man? That guy, like, I, I I think he would have gone crazy before he hurt his head, and then he hurt his head and was like, let's go Just even like, crazier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, then Francesco Akira. This was... This was a great match for him, and he really had, like, the most character stuff in it for real, Um, everything leading up to it, like being in over his head, all that stuff, getting, you know, the the victim getting his own back on the the bully, so to speak, fighting back against Drilly, using the fork on him, you know, fucking him up, Um, just fighting until he was absolutely destroyed. At one point there when there's literally no ring left, he's just, like, on the apron on the inside of the ropes, holding onto the ropes to not fall to his death, just like super kicking a dude in the face over and over in the corner. You know what I mean? He could barely even fucking get any purchase. He was doing everything he could just to fight and then ends up like destroyed and essentially just like cradled in Will's arms when, you know, in that last moment when the war dogs surround him and then he's like, Will kind of, you know, rolls him out of the ring kind of unceremoniously. He fucking has to eat shit off the apron, but, and then, goes and falls on his sword himself. You know what I mean? Like, it, Yeah, he wasn't going to let Yeah. He wasn't going to let Akira take the fall for him. He, he was, was like, like this nah. is my this is my show. Yeah, exactly. I, this fucking mess is all revolves around me, so I'm I'm going out. Um and I really like that. I, I thought it was a really nice character moment and in the post match stuff, you know, Akira has sort of a, a nice moment. He's still fighting his beats with his promos and stuff, but he essentially says like I was scared before I went into this, but I'm not scared anymore. You know, and he and he kind of declares that he's he's really going to go for that junior heavyweight title. I'm the ace of United Empire, kind of thing for the juniors, and I, and I like that. I think that's really cool. I th- I think him as a single guy should be would be really cool. I definitely think so. Like he and TJP are great together. Catch two two is awesome, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, man, let's let's let TJ or let's let Akira, you know, show how how far he's come Absolutely. in the last two years, how how much he's grown in the last two years, and he really has. Mm-hmm. He really has, as far as a a character, as far as a performer, uh, and and let's see what he can do. Let's see what he can end up carrying. 
Absolutely. See how how much water this kid can carry. Yeah. I I love it. I think quite great. I think quite a lot. And when you think back to best of the Super Juniors and his match with Despy, they're really really good together. And Despy's currently the champion, so you could dial in that program really easily. And and I imagine it would look great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so the last the the last bits of the match. Everything's torn apart. Yeah. Everything is absolutely crumbling. And it is funny because as the ring is getting torn apart, Will's faction is being torn apart. Yeah. You know, people are getting taken out. Like uh, Okan even showed up to like save the day. And I thought that that was where the tide was going to turn. But even that couldn't hold the war dog. So don't you think that, that I'm glad you brought that up because that felt a little bit weird. And I feel like they did. Okan a little bit dirty because he came out and was very ineffective. Like he he got he he got Callum Newman loose, but then he just sort of gets t- taken out by Gator. I think he gets kicked in the balls or something. I would have loved to see something a little bit more dominant from him, but then have him like mobbed by the dogs or whatever. Like imagine like uh, Gator's fucking about. He's up to something. Okan cuts him off. Akan just fucking does that big face choke slam he does, like through a table or something, absolutely destroys Gato, but then fucking turns around and runs into like Drilla and Kid and they kick the shit out of him. You know, just something like that where he just doesn't really get taken out like a geek, you know, like especially for somebody we're talking about that should maybe be the future leader who is the KOPW champion. Like I, w- I would have liked him to have a little bit bigger moment in that. Um, how did you feel about that? Because it, it just f- sort of felt a bit clunky and weird. That was maybe the only sort of downside of the entire thing for me. Well, my question is, why wasn't he in this? You know, why was yeah. he the one that was separate from this? Mm. And like, he okay, so you wouldn't have had to, I mean, I, I get maybe Will pick the team, something like that, I don't know. Well, I guess he, like, he, he had his own KOPW stuff going on, I guess. Like, didn't he? He had a defense on this show, didn't he? No, he did not have a defense on this show. He had a defense on the show where this match was set, so he wasn't in the ring when this match was set. Yeah, okay. But, like, afterwards, Will was like, you, your five versus my five. Like, he could have picked the yeah. you know the five hand pick the five um I, I i don't know i just goes to my frustration with what's going on with ocon yeah. right now mm-hmm. you know i'm a, i'm a big ocon fan my wife's a big ocon fan we want to see ocon win and be celebrated and and it just seems like you know we said connor's might be being pushed to the back but it seems like maybe fucking ocon's really being pushed to the back right now and yeah. maybe Maybe it's going to develop into something else, and we'll see Ocon split from the Empire, or maybe he'll take the reins on the Empire. Who knows? Yeah. I, I hope one of those things happen. I hope it isn't just like treading water, doing nothing forever. That's that's always the scariest part when it comes to New Japan. They may just be like, this is what he is, and it's all he'll ever be. He's joked about dicks one too many times online, and now we're not interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. He, he's like he's a draw it, in Japan. He's famous. You know what I mean. So I I can't imagine. Awesome. And they they like fucking had all that stuff with Moxon. They're doing something with him. I got to believe they're doing something with him. Um, and then I guess yeah, like you said, end of the match, the War Dogs tear down the ring. They're just like fuck it. They're like fuck this place up, tear it down. Like more just like a symbolic. Like we're literally destroying New Japan. You know. Um. How were you – all of this starts to happen and it all gets very stressful, you know, fucking doing moves off turnbuckles onto loose boards that are shooting up everywhere and people are falling through the rig and there's all kinds of stuff going on. It was very fucking stressful. <laughs> oh, my God, um, yeah. But very cool and massively increased the drama of the match. Were you watching it, especially since you were like, United Empire are probably going to win from what I'm saying. Were you like, what the fuck is happening <laughs> Well, I, th- I thought it was appropriate that, like, like I said, as the ring was being taken apart, so was Will's team. Yeah, like they've they systematically taken apart the United Empire. Now they are systematically taking apart everything. Yeah, 
And I, I fucking love that. I, I had a, I had a we work stiff moment there where I was like, oh, I see the symbolism. Yeah, I see yeah. the machinations, you know. <laughs> and I was fucking loving it. Uh-huh. But, but like I said, there was that moment where I saw Will and all five war dogs, and he had no one left with him. And I was like, how the fuck are they going to have Will Osprey bury five fucking dudes right now? Oh, it's over. Okay, cool. We're fine. Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, they did the right thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so mm -hmm. this, the, the thoughts that I had at the, at the end of the match, Mm -hmm. I thought it was the best war games match, you know, blood and guts is what they call it in AEW. Mm -hmm. It's the best one of those I've seen since I was a kid, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, like literally like old NWA Jim Crockett fucking war games matches. Um, when I used to do smart foundation, uh, Every episode, Shane and I would pick a a, a match to review, mm-hmm. and I I picked one of my favorite War Games matches. But before I did that, I went through and watched all those old '80s War Games matches. Yeah, really. And um, this one was the fucking best one I've seen <laughs> since then. I think as well, like, like like this, the location of it because it never happens in New Japan. Like it just seems so fucking insane. Like while it was happening. It's it's so weird how sometimes other companies will do one company shtick, and mm. it they do it so well. Yeah, there was uh, I was reminded today of uh, a fatal four way for the WWF title that they did in um, it was Bret Hart, Vader, uh, Stone Cold, and the Undertaker, I believe, mm-hmm. and but it was all four men in the ring. Uh, over the top rope elimination or pinfall or I know the exact um, match you're talking about. It's from like an in your house or something. In your house was, fatal four way. And it was one of my favorites as a kid. Like I actually watched it again not even that long ago. Cause I was just like, great, right? say, that's a great match. And it's so but cool that is, going into it. That is an absolutely Japanese stipulation. Yeah. You know, the yeah. over the top rope or the and and they did it so fucking well. Yeah. And then New Japan just took WWE or, you know, AEW's yeah. thing mm-hmm. and did it so fucking well. And it was just like, it's like a game of, can you top this? And I, I don't think they're going to be able to, oh, it was, I don't, it was I don't, awesome. I don't know. And I, I always, I'm always down on AEW. I'm the hater or whatever, but like, I can't think of how they're going to be able to top what we just watched, mm. especially like the sheer amount of talent they have in the ring. The storytelling that they've built for this, you know, the the individual stories that are going on mm-hmm. for for each member and how each member got their moment to shine, the 60, 64 fucking minutes, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and it felt like 30, 35. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it burned it, man. It was awesome. And I loved as well, I loved their cage design. They even did a very Japanese sort of cage design that oh, allowed, so cool. allowed for them to just like fence off the participants from the crowd. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. this is just to keep them in here so they're not doing any damage. And I love that it was low. So if you were in the arena, like and you're further out, you can just see into the ring, which is great. I love that the cage was painted black so you can see through it. You know what I mean? Light isn't catching mm-hmm. on like silver bars or blue bars or whatever it may be. So even if you're down on the ground, you can see in fine. And then they were able to use it. You know, people are getting handcuffed to it. People are jumping off it. Like the, I, I think it they just a lot used of it really well. Room to play at the at the ringside as well. Yeah, plenty exactly. of room to play at ringside. Exactly right. And if they were like in the big cage type structure that's fast to the ring it would really eliminate like all that room especially once you put like 10 guys in it you know what i mean it would be chaos you need all that outside space for people to fall out and be brawling and be handcuffed and to do all those kind of things you know yeah so let's let's um take a second so stinky uncle dave Meltzer gave this 4.25 stars Mm -hmm. where do you fall on that is that high is that low it's low in my my eyes. I, th- I think it's high for real. I mean, it's it's different in that, like, you know, maybe in his scale, because we talk about the guy gets five, five and a half, six stars for, you know, masterpieces. And so maybe for him, he's like, this was a really fun fight, but it's not like a, you know, technically a, a classic wrestling match that I can sort of 
like, you know, rate that high. For me, as just enjoyment, I can't remember the last time I enjoyed a New Japan match that much. Like probably wow. yeah. probably the Omega Okada draw at Dominion was the most wow. the most fun I've ever had watching New Japan live. And then this is this is probably next for me. Like live in my house. Like I was on the edge of my seat for both matches. And so yeah, I, I really can't overstate how much fun I had with it, you know? Yeah, I was very excited for it. Like once they announced this match at, at Dash, I was fucking on board. I was on board, and, but I didn't uh, know it would be this good. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, it'll be cool to have a cage match. In New Japan. I did not expect that it would hit like it did. Yeah, yeah, you're hundred percent right. And it it hit and it fucking stuck. Yeah, it was so good. Absolutely. So let's let's talk about the last two participants, and then we'll wrap it up. We we're like, we're going to do shorter form episodes, and we're nearly at an hour. But like, um. Quickly, let's touch on Fidlay. We we did briefly at the start, but at the end, he hits he hits his finisher on Will, pins him clean as a whistle. <laughs> Finley wins. Bullet Club wins. That's it. Not a huge amount of words from him at the end. He was just like, "This is our fucking, you know, house now, essentially." And then leaves, and then they give the ring to United Empire, and then Will can do a bit of a speech, and the streamers could come. How are you feeling about Fidley as the leader of the Bullet Club now, about how he's been talking, how he was in this match, how he's been performing? Because I, I'm feeling pretty high on him, man. Like, I, I really am. Weird. Like, yeah, he's he, he's getting it now and, you know, he's, he's picking up steam. He's absolutely fucking killing it. Like, I thought he was doing great before. I mean, you and I have pretty, pretty much been high on him since, like, he – he turned and became, you know, the rebel and things like that. We've, yeah. we've kind of been like, all right, this guy's got, he's got something. We were rooting for him over Sonata in the new Japan cup, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Like we, we have thought about David Finley uh, as leader of the bullet club or, or as this rebel character um, has, has been good. Uh -huh. But I think now it's getting there. It's getting to great now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, like, I'm fully on side with this. I'm fully on side with this. Like, there's cool Bullet Club. Mm -hmm. Cool Bullet Club is AJ Styles' Bullet Club. Cool Bullet Club is, uh, you know, the elite, yeah. you know. Uh, then there's, you know, there's um, the Bullet Club that's dangerous. Dangerous Bullet Club was Devitt. Dangerous Bullet Club was Jay White. Now it's fucking terrifying Bullet Club. <laughs> like those those five dudes right there. And when I say Bullet Club, I just mean those five. Yeah. They're fucking terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Like they're dangerous. Eh? That's good. D TJP had to literally like transform into a demon <laughs> to beat them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They just took apart. The most popular, and I mean, he didn't even beat. Oh, then he beat them that one time, but <laughs> he, he, did, one he time. did beat them this time. Uh, they, they they just took apart the most popular franchise in the in the franchise. Uh, the, <laughs> it's not a franchise. It's not a fucking McDonald's. They just took apart the the <laughs> most popular team. Yeah, in the entire fucking company, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't beat them. They took them apart. Mm -hmm. You know, it was sick, man. Yeah. And 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 like that's a level that Bullet Club's never been at. Yeah. It's a level that nobody gave David Finley that, oh, David Finley's a second rate Jay White. Yeah, yeah. You're not fucking listening. Yeah. You're yeah. not listening and you never have. Yeah. Tell me you do, tell me you don't watch New Japan without telling me you don't watch <laughs> New Japan. How good to have like a Bullet Club leader as well that like backs up his shit talking and actually fights, you know. Jay White's kind of thing was like that cowardly sort of, you know, get behind his guys and do things and slide down the ring and stuff. Like, Finlay's just like, I'm just going to fuck you up. Like, and my guys yeah. are also going to fuck you up. Like, he backs it up, he gets in there and he fights. And, like, you know, he he does so, you know, evilly, I guess. But, yeah, it, it's really good, man. When he came out first to, to fight Will, I was fucking shocked. I was like, you thought he'd really? be last. Yeah. 
I thought he'd be last. I thought he'd come in, you know, last laughing, swinging his fucking. That's what Jay White would have done. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Would have been coming like showing his abs, like fucking the all the dramatic entrances, like his guys are like beating down the dudes. Like, nah, it's like fucking. Nah. He's like, I'll fucking start the shit, and I'll give you more time than even allocated. It's only supposed to be a minute. I'll give you five minutes before fucking my homie comes in. Like, yeah, that's how unintimidated he is by Will. Like. And and uh, calling himself the goat slayer now, like after putting him Love out, it's fucking so Love cool. that. <laughs> Love it. And and we, I mean, we've talked at nauseum about Will Ospreay, but th- this is how you like go out of a company, right? Like everything he's done On since the second that he announced it, he's done nothing but try and put everybody over, make everybody look good. Fucking goes out on his back. In his press conference, the last thing he's literally saying is like, hey, before I go, there's a young kid named Callan Newman here. I believe he's got what it takes. We're a lot alike and he's going to make mistakes, but please treat him like you treated me. Like That was the last last things he said. You know what I mean? Putting a young dude over that he believes in before he fucking walks out the door. It's just what a class act. Like how much that guy has grown up like in the time he's been with New Japan is unbelievable. Kellen Newman, like, I want to get behind him. I want to feel like Callum Newman is going to be something special in New Japan. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm so gun shy right now, you know? Like, the second Callum Newman starts taking off, he's just fucking going to be gone. So he gives a shit. Yeah, yeah. You just got to give him time. You know what I mean? Like, he, he... he can say words and, you know, Will can put his name on him and all these things can happen. But at the end of the day, he's just got to do the work and do the actions. You know what I mean? Build up that resume in New Japan, see him struggle, see him do those tours, see him do it and and it'll turn. You know what I mean? We might be ter- we might be talking in a year like he's the fucking one, you know, like or it might be five years or maybe he's gone in six months. You don't know, but – all you could do is let it play out and and give it an open mind, you know. Yeah, root for them while they're here now, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. he's he's definitely it's that it comes back to that contract stuff. We can't base our viewership on who might leave and might not. I mean, it's already affecting the way we look at Jeff Cobb. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and and so so that's a thing. But hey, we'll see how it goes. Either way, it was. A super fun match. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I think everybody came out shinier and I'm sure a lot more bruised than they fucking were going in. But it, I think everybody benefited from it. Everybody benefited from it. And yeah. and who benefited from it the most? We, the viewing yeah. audience. We, that the was viewing it. Audience. Absolutely. All right. And if, that's the, if that is the last time we see Will in New Japan – uh, especially in a big main event scene like that, then it was it was fucking worth it. Will did the right thing, uh, Absolutely. You, you know, put over it, put over a rival, went out on his back, mm-hmm. went out, you know, making everybody else look like a star, which he always does. Will yeah. Will's always done everything a hundred percent right when it comes to doing business the right way, you know, whatever that means. Uh-huh. Uh, he did it, yeah, and that was awesome. Absolutely. So thank you, Will Ospreay. Yeah, thank you, Will Ospreay. It was awesome. Absolutely. All right. Well, there you go. That is our coverage of the Dog Pound Cage match. And absolutely loved it. We are going to take a minute. We're going to reboot and then we're going to talk some Zack Sabre Jr., I reckon. So uh, yeah. it's all the all the same stuff. We obviously haven't changed over our Twitter and Instagrams and all those things yet. Hey, give us some time. But uh, it's always it's like, yeah, it's all, all the same stuff for now. So, so how do we say it? I mean, have we got we've got a new sign off, right? But we're, we're still figuring yeah. it out. So it's going to be rate and subscribe, listen or die, bring the fight, style it strong, sweet cast, itchy bar, itchy bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, peace out. Later. Ring Post Radio is the only show hosted by Ryan Knightsey and Scotty Edwards that talks about the entire world of professional wrestling. With new episodes coming out every Sunday, there is absolutely no reason to not listen to real, honest wrestling opinions from two crazy maniacs. Have a hot boy summer and listen along to Ring Post Radio every Sunday on the Countout Network. This has been a Countout Podcast.